All right. So in the last video, we started building our first game in Phaser using the Repolit online IDE. And uh, here, as you can see, I managed to get a, a better PNG without a transparency uh, of our little duck superhero. And, uh, and so now we don't have that black box behind him. Uh, we've got him moving around. And as I said in the last video today, we want to go over how to create build our whole level programmatically uh, using uh, functions or loops or a combination of both. So here we go. Uh, so here we've got our create function. Uh, and just a reminder, we manually created each of these boxes individually. We don't exactly want that. Uh, what I'd rather have is a function that I give it one x, y value and it will generate a platform starting at this point and then I want to tell it how many boxes I want and then it generates one each one uh, uh, next to it and we determined that to get this spacing 75 is a good distance between them on our x-axis so let's do that I'm going to define another function we can just throw it right in here and I'm going to call it uh, build platform and I want to pass into it a few parameters an X and a Y that's going to be the starting X and Y position of my platform and then the last one is uh, I'm going to do size okay and that will determine how many boxes uh, we need so if we only want one we just pass in one if we want five we can pass a five and it will do five boxes and now, because we want to repeat that, we're going to do a for loop. And if you've never worked with for loops, I strongly recommend you uh, look at maybe some of my other videos or, or other resources looking, learning about for loops, how they work. Uh, it's, it's a loop where we can repeat code, and it's a, it's a nice loop where it has built in creating a new variable that will iterate. It will increase or change the way we want it to so that we can get... The behavior we want and so here we go so I'm going to create a new variable and let's call it I and I'm going to set it to uh, zero to start okay uh, and we want this to loop as long as I is less than size and uh, I plus plus which means it's going to increase every time we iterate and this loop okay and so uh, in our for loop here I want to essentially call this function and so I'm going to call platforms and this is again why we made that variable platforms global at the bottom of our code uh, create and I want to start it at X Y whatever we pass in and uh, I want to, it to be a box okay now, if I just leave it like this, then of course, even if we do five boxes, all of them will be created on top of each other. We don't want that. So this is where I want to add an offset on my X. And so I'm going to do X plus I times and the offset we determined was 75. So let's think about that for a second. I is starting at zero, which means Let's say I call this function and maybe let's let's try to recreate this, all of this using our new function, shall we? Uh, so I'm going to keep it there for a second and I'm just going to call build platform and uh, my first value, I want it to be at 50, 500 and let's see, I've got six boxes there, so I want six, okay? So let's see if this is gonna work. So I'm passing in 50, 506, that means X is gonna be 50, Y will be 500, and size will be six. So right here, that will be 50 plus zero, because I is starting at zero times 75, which gives us zero. So that will be 50, 500 box. So that, that looks right. Now, I will increase to one, so let's see, that means it's going to be 50 plus 1 times 75, which means 50 plus 75. There we go. We're going to get 125, because that's 50 plus 75 is 125. When I is 2, that'll be 50 plus 2 times 75, which is 150. 
150 plus 50 is 200, which will give us that guy, and so on. So now, let's try deleting all of that and replace it with just a call to build platform. And boom, we get the exact same thing. Now with a single line of code, isn't that lovely? Uh, so now let's add another platform for our duck to jump to. So now, uh, hmm, let's see, that's good. That ended up at what? 125, 200, 275, 350, 425. So let's go, let's start around 600 maybe. Um, and let's go up a little bit. So maybe 400. And let's just do a three box platform and run that and there we go now we've got him we've got somewhere for him to go now you'll notice that normally a platform it scrolls right it goes farther that's you know this isn't this isn't where we want we don't want it to stop right here and also normally in platformers it will keep your character in the center and the camera will move with it Again, because Phaser is a game engine framework, it does a lot of this for you out of the box. There's very little custom work you have to do. Uh, so let's take a look at that. Um, so first of all, we want to uh, set the width, change the width um, of, our, uh, of our game. So in our create, these has to do with our camera. So this dot cameras dot main dot set bounds and I'm gonna go from zero zero up to uh, let's go to five thousand and maybe five hundred on on our Y. So those are the bounds of our camera. And we also can do this dot cameras dot main dot start follow this dot player. Now this is going to give us an error because I'm trying to reference this before it's created. We don't create it till here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those cameras commands and put them at the bottom. Let's try that. Okay, now we've got this. And now if we notice, we can move around. Now, even though it will follow me even further, here's a problem. I can't go any farther. I'm holding the right arrow, but it's stopping me. Why is that? And that's because of this set collide world bounds true. It's not letting me pass, go past the world. Um, and so I could change this to match 5,000. And let's see what happens there. Well, now my duck is way over there. Uh, and that's because of where I'm initially setting him. Right now he was set to the middle. We don't want that. Let's just set him instead to 50-50. There we go. And now if we go, it doesn't follow me anymore because this determines the, the size of this box. And so that's why we want to keep that width to 800. And if we just set our collide world bounds to false, that should allow us to move past that initial place and go all the way down. But then of course he falls right off the bottom of the world and is gone. Uh, so that he can come back and we can just keep on going. This is where in our update, one last thing I wanna do and then I'll stop uh, is let's add in a condition if this dot player dot y is greater than config this dot uh, or what was that variable again for the world or 
where do we refer to the world? Right here, config.wit. Okay, so it, I was right. Config.height. So if your y value is greater than height, because remember, it goes from zero at the very top all the way down, it increases as we go down, right? Down to 600 or up to 600. Kind of confusing there. If that's true, let's just set this player dot y to 50 and this player dot x to 50. Let's just throw them right back at its starting point. So if I fall down, boom, he's going to keep on coming back. Boom. Whoa. Boom. There we go. Um, moving forward. What you would do, what would we do to build a, pl um, a whole level? Just keep on calling more of these for each platform you want. And uh, you know, you can of course replace these images with whatever other images you want. Um, in the next video, I'm gonna show you how we can get uh, some animation going. So if you have an animated GIF, like we had, um, this is actually from an animated GIF where his cape flies a little bit. He blinks every now and again, get a standing idle animation. Uh, I'll show you how do we can process that, create a sprite sheet, and from there, if you have a, even running animations, we can apply those in as well. All right. Thanks, everyone. That's it for this, this video. Bye-bye.